On January 1st, 2025, the e-invoicing obligation will come into effect in Germany. And around this topic, I have already heard an incredible number of stories, myths and misconceptions. In this video, we will take a look at the five most common misconceptions and discuss what is true about them. And the first point is that I have been doing my invoicing for a very long time indeed. I have been sending my invoices electronically for many, many years. Yes, that's true, but most likely, probably not in the future, definitely not in the future valid e-invoicing format. We are all typically used to sending or usually receiving our invoices as PDFs. A PDF is not an e-invoice in any way, it's according to the new legal regulation. There are prescribed invoice formats that must be used in the future, such as the X invoice or the lead horse invoice. This means you need to adjust your processes even if you have sent PDFs in the past. The second misconception that I often hear is, what is Grandma Emma doing around the corner now? What is Grandma Emma, Grandma Erna and Grandma Annalisa doing? What will they do now if they suddenly receive an e-invoice? How are they supposed to read this? It, and here is a very important clarification because I have heard this very often. Grandma Emma, Grandma Annalisa or Grandma Erna are indeed probably not businesses. The e-invoicing obligation applies only to invoices sent from one business to another in the context of transactions and between entities. And this means that it will only be implemented in B2B, at least initially, and only for domestic B2B business relationships in Germany. This means that if you, as a customer, have a company in Austria, you do not have to issue an e-invoice. Therefore, all the grandmas, and by the way, also the grandpas and the young people who are simply buying something privately, will not receive an e-invoice starting in 2025. Instead, they can continue to receive their invoices just as they do today and did yesterday. There is no legal adjustment for that. A third statement that I hear quite often is something like, I don't have to worry about the e-invoicing obligation anyway. I'm a small business and I don't charge VAT anyway. Unfortunately, I have to disappoint you on that. In fact, indeed, there are absolutely no real simplifications for small businesses with a small exception. The obligation to send e-invoices applies from January 1st, 2027, unless you make below a certain minimum revenue in the year. That means if you are small, I mean as small as you can be in terms of revenue, you will only have to start sending e-invoices from January 1st, 2028. Then this also applies to small businesses, such as including part-time self-employment within any small trade. You must issue an e-invoice when your customers are at least a business. This misconception arises from the fact that there is a simplification rule for small transactions, meaning for small invoices. There are so-called small value invoices. These are invoices where the invoice amount is below 250. And these invoices up to $250 do not actually need to be issued in the e-invoicing format. This means that if you sell products in your online shop, for example, and the products cost a maximum of $250, and generally the invoices are always under $250, then you don't need to worry about the whole topic. You can issue your invoices just as you have always done. The fourth misconception is somewhat related to this and states that starting from January 1st, 2025, everything will be different and accounting will fundamentally change. From January 1st, 2025, the legal obligation is only that you must be able to receive an e-invoice, not to issue one. This means that you are required to have the capability to accept electronic invoices, but you are not mandated to generate or send them yourself, and you can receive it with an email address, which makes the process simpler and more convenient. This means that, due to this legal regulation, if you have a business, you are now indeed required to have an email address starting from January 1st, 2025. And yes, it is indeed an obligation, but fulfilling it is not that difficult nowadays. You only need to issue the e-invoice, as I just mentioned, starting from January 1st, 2027. From January 1st, 2028, if you make under euros in revenue. This means that, yes, something is definitely being introduced now, but it will take time. You can still currently send PDF invoices paper invoices and so on for the next two or three years. And fifthly, I often hear that the accounting software is really taking advantage of us. Now, because now I need some software that can process e-invoices, meaning I can create them, but I also need to be able to process incoming e-invoices somehow. And now I have to buy an accounting program, but it doesn't make sense for me at all because I only have a small side business. And here I can also give you a bit of reassurance, namely that what I have observed so far for example, 
with Cevdesk or Lexware Office clearly shows that the e-invoice is not only included in the most expensive package, but usually in all of them. In fact, there are providers like, for example, for Accountable, in my opinion, is a highly recommended tool, especially when starting a part-time self-employment or taking advantage of the small business regulation and wanting software for all accounting and tax matters. And Accountable has already announced that writing e-invoices will definitely, absolutely and completely be free at Accountable. That means if you want to prepare yourself and be ready for e-invoices starting from January 1st, 2025, but don't want to pay any money, then feel free to check out Accountable. You will also find a link to it in the video description below. But I am also firmly convinced that in the coming weeks and months, a whole range of software solutions will emerge that will offer e-invoicing for free. Therefore, I would say no stress for now. Starting from January won't. For now, you only need an email address and you will have to write the e-invoice in two or three years. And if by then there are not at least five or 10 providers with whom you can create an e-invoice for free, feel free to come back here in two or three years and complain vigorously in the comments. I would be absolutely very surprised if there are no free possible solutions for this at all in any way whatsoever. I hope this video was helpful to you and that I could alleviate some of your initial fears regarding the e-invoicing obligation. What do you think about the obligation in general? Feel free to share your opinion and thoughts in the comment section below. And if you have specific questions about the entire topic of e-invoicing, please leave a comment in the video section as well because I will be following the entire process of implementing this e-invoicing obligation in the coming weeks. And whenever there is something new, I will record a new video about it. Therefore, it is worth subscribing to this channel. It's also worth taking a look at the video description. There, you'll find a whole range of exciting tools for business accounts, accounting programs, Accountable, which allows you to create free e-invoices and so on. Feel free to check it out or just click directly here. And now you could, for example, watch more videos that I have already published here on this channel, for example, this one or this one. <laughs>